Good morning and welcome to another episode of The Ladies Club. My name is Valen Curti, so good to be with you. We have a great show in store for you today as we continue to shine the spotlight and bring you the best when it comes to women's sport here in South Africa. Now, thank you for joining us again. You obviously belong. Now, there's a lot to look forward to today, you know, because we take a look at things related to branding in women's sports. And we do have our guest, Unaliruna Monaki Brenda Mopedi, who will help us unpack this issue. You're obviously welcome to join the conversation. Kopana Lorna, of social media platform, Sarona, Ke at Valen Ketli, at Lewo Motswedi, at Spotted SABC, Ibile Okasavidisa, hashtag Yaruna Elling, hashtag The Ladies Club. Well, our topic today is going to look at the branding of female athletes and it's something that I'm so excited to actually mm. be speaking about because the male-centric sports uh, world female athletes have largely been an afterthought when it comes to branding. But the tide is slowly turning, or is it? Brands are starting to see the value in female athletes and now more marketing brands are ending up in the pockets of female sports figures. Retail giants like Spa yeah. are playing a huge role in supporting female athletes and women's sports. Uh, spa as well as Cecil. Absolutely. Now, as per tradition, we also start with an inspiring quote to get us going. This week, our words of wisdom come from Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Amina Jane Mohammed, and it says, when women are kept out of the labor force, everyone pays the price. But another way we know that the women are equal in participation in the labor force would unlock trillions in global growth. And that money could be used to further access to educate health and services for all women, but not all women, for all women, rather. Yeah, and I suppose it comes down to that same thing of you uplift a woman and you uplift a community. A nation, yes. That's exactly what it's about. Amina Jane Mohammed rose from humble, humble beginnings to become a government minister and the UN's second in command. After years in the private sector, Mohammed served three Nigerian presidents before becoming advisor to Ban Ki Moon on the post 2015 development agenda. She's really incredible. I mean, she is a smart, uh, a thought out leader. Mohammed also serving as the CEO uh, and founder of the Think Tank Center for Development uh, Policy Solutions. So she's really an incredible woman, but we do have incredible women who are also raising the bar to that kind of stature here in South Africa that are plowing back and giving back to women uh, and development as well as women in sport. And that's something so positive to hear. I can't wait to start the conversation with our game changer, Brenda. She's sitting in our lounge and I think that we're going to get into that conversation as soon as we return from this quick break. Do stay with the Ladies Club. Welcome back. Onto Shebile na no larna le rata hangla mafu mahadi elin the ladies club. Mona mukana le yabo bedi hope lau kaku pala runa ko at spotted SABC at Valen currently at Lebo Mutswedi. Hashtag the ladies club. So before we bring you our game changer, Brenda Mopedi, she's standing by. Let's tell you a little bit about some things that have been in the news lately, and one of them is South Africa and netball eagerly waiting to learn. Which city will host a 2023 Netball World Cup? So New Zealand's decision to actually join the process was a blow to Africa's bid to host the event for the first time because the Kiwis have a rich history with the sport and have invested highly in it. The South African camp, however, is confident of securing hosting rights. Absolutely. It will cost South Africa 68 million rand to host the World Cup. But the returns will be much, much more, obviously, given that uh, 120,000 visitors are definitely expected. The economy would benefit from the injection of 20. 2.6 billion rand. So let's pray and hope and work hard. Uh, the work hard has already been done. Uh, let's just hope that it comes to our shores for the very first time on the continent, if it does come, in fact. It will give Nepal yeah. and Nepal in Africa a massive shot in the arm. So mm. we look forward to hearing what uh, the International Nepal Federation has to say before the Nepal World Cup, which is going to be taking place in the UK, and who actually gets to host mm. the next World Cup. So we're excited to be joined by marketing specialist Brenda Mopedi, who's here to help discuss the issues around branding of female athletes. 
Now, Brenda is probably one of the best people that you want to speak to when it comes to this. She's highly experienced when it comes to marketing. They call her a guru. Absolutely. She's been involved in brand management and sponsorship marketing for over 16 years, working across the private and public sectors. She also joined Cecil Group Corporate Affairs as a brand marketing specialist back in 2015. But let's leave it there and let her tell you the story in her branding and marketing capacity. Welcome to the Ladies, ladies Club. Club. Thank you, ladies. Uh, morning, Lebu. Morning, Valen. It's so good to be here. Ah, thank you so much. I'm so much. happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for taking time out of your schedule. So we've given a little bit of a taste of uh, who you are, but tell us who is Brenda and her interest in marketing and specifically a love for sport. Oh, Brenda. Brenda Mupedi comes from the Free State. Um, and, you know, my career started in sales. A lot of us who study marketing, you study in sales. I used to go around FMCG where you go to different retails, you know, you go and do stock taking, mm -hmm. ordering and all of that. And uh, one day I got a break to be an assistant brand marketing for two beautiful products then um, for an FM FMCG company. I was working on a water brand. I was also working on an, an iced tea brand. And within that sector, that's where I was a bit, um, I got an opportunity to, to be in sport. But nevertheless, after that, I went into destination marketing. Yes, I used to sell wow. the free state around the world, even in South Africa. It sometimes not, was not easy to sell, especially mm -hmm. when you uh, compete with your coastal areas. The ocean. Yes, yes, the ocean. <laughs> but you know, you, you get those authentic people who wants to come and see the beautiful Clarence, you know. To them also, it's about the mountains. It's, it's, it's about, uh, and Makufe as well. Yes. I, I know you ladies know Makufe. Yeah, I used yeah. to be part of the team yeah. that used to promote that. And then one day, uh, something happened I joined Sasol when I joined Sasol I was in pure marketing but I used to support sponsorship on motorsport it was my first time being exposed to motorsport and sure. I must say for me I was like wow cars what do we do but we had a great partner by then as Sasol which was VW and you know the late Gugu Zulu mm -hmm. yes yes it was during that but 2015 um, I, I got an opportunity to apply for a job at, 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 at group and I remember when, when I was in the interview they, they were talking more about women football about banyana banyana mm. and I was like gee oh banyana banyana mm. but for me I, I'm, I'm a Orlando Pirates fan as I grow up yeah. I always always love football so the transition was easy for me I remember my first first game that I got exposed to mm. banyana was playing against Gabon in Mahulong Stadium it was an, an Olympic qualifier and I was like I just see men here mm. You're, and you know, you get intimidated True. because it's their world, especially football. Football is run by men. But in the next two months, I remember I got in love with the sport. I was there when Banyana qualified for the Rio Olympics when Jermaine scored that goal mm. in Equatorial Guinea. The stadium was packed with over 40,000 wow. uh, fans. And, and I just, the tears of joy by then, we still had coach Vera mm. and I just fell in love with it, the passion and also understanding why Sasol is part of women football or why is Sasol partnering with Safa. I think for me the, the, the whole thing of women empowerment, the whole thing of developing women football, mm. I just got in love with it because community de development, it's, it's what I like most. And, and let's go back to that uh why Cecil has decided to partner up with Banyana Banyana when nobody else was putting money on the table, you know? What was the objective behind it? Because you are celebrating 10 years now. Sure. Yes, it is 10 years. If you can recall, Sasol used to sponsor the under 23, mm -hmm. uh, the Ahmad Look Look. Mm -hmm. And um, while they were doing that internally as a company, they were focusing in, 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 women, in, in women empowerment. And one of the things as a brand that has its heritage in South Africa, they also wanted to uh, empower women in our communities. And because sport is one of the key things that can be used 
Uh, and then there it was, the decision was, okay, we're going to end. I might look, look, but instead of uh, ending our partnership with Safa, we are getting involved in women football. Wow. So that's where the story began. Sure. I can't believe it. Ten years. It feels like it was just the other day that the announcement was made. But mm. there's such a there's there's such a synergy now between Sasso and Banyana. Um, and you guys have been the driving force behind women's football. You've also seen them to not only their first Olympic Games, but their second Olympic Games, and now the first time ever that the country has qualified for the World mm -hmm. Cup. Uh, why do you think other sponsors have not jumped at this opportunity to be a part of history like Sassel has? So when you look back, I mean, women, women football and women in sport in general, yeah. there were not a lot of uh, companies backing it. I mean, it was great that internally Sassel took that decision True. to do that. And then also when it started, I mean, they started the Sassel League as well, Safa and Sasol. So to build it up to where it is. And when you check Valen during those years, I mean, Coach Des said it once as well. They used to play 15 games in three years. Now you get the team playing 15 yeah. games a year. Mm. So the landscape has changed. Yes, of course, as brand, you need to be careful. You need to look at your return in investment. And sometimes when something is new, you take time and you look at it and you look where it is, you know, in terms of growth. But I think now we've changed a lot of things. The team itself, the, the, the environment itself of women football or women in sport has changed. Mm. And I believe we're going to get more, more uh, company coming in to invest. And it's also a good story that a brand like Sasol has been there for 10 years. Mm. Sure, Very in terms of, of, of brand awareness and association, how do you guys see the relationship growing further from your perspective as a guru, marketing guru? Um, remember, one of the things uh, as a sponsor, when you get involved, you need to take care of your rights. You need to invest or, 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 or leverage your investment. And the more the team does well, mm. the more as a brand you get mileage out sure. of it. Yeah. So we've seen them. You said it. We are so happy for them that they've qualified for the World Cup for the first time. But with us, it's been a story of 10 years. We've always yeah. been proud of them. We've seen a lot mm. of girls getting opportunity to go and play in clubs, getting scholarships. Yeah. And now, uh, since last year, we see them even getting um, contract in yeah. the, one of the best leagues in the world. Yeah. And one of the things that I like mm -hmm. about when you invest in women, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to be biased, mm -hmm. is they will always, always acknowledge the person that helped them to grow. So mm -hmm. I see it as an opportunity for us. We are still in this uh, for the next two years. And for now, we are grateful for the performance of the team. We are also happy with the Sasso League because it's a feeder to Banyana Banyana. Sure, it's incredible. But let's look at another story here, Valen Nike, who's, who's doing well. Yeah, speaking about branding, I mean, doesn't Nike always get it right, where they just touch the heart of Absolutely. what is on the social consciousness. Mm. And when we speak about uplifting women's sport and speaking about equality, mm. Nike got it dead on with their new ad that was released during the Academy Awards. The latest ad shines the spotlights on female athletes who have broken barriers. The one minute, 30 second adverts premiered during the 91st Academy Awards and features several female athletes, including South Africa's 800 meter Olympic champion, Casta Semenya. Serena Williams actually voice overs yeah. the advert. Yeah. I mean, it's quite incredible. It is quite. And it's so it's powerful. Very touching as well. I mean, Simone Biles is also there as well as uh, the US women's national soccer team titled The Dream Crazier. And the ad has been viewed more than, it's more than, way more than three million as things stand. A uh, million times on YouTube. I don't know how many times I've seen it, so it's really incredible. You know what I really like about Nike, and I think that a lot of brands are actually starting to understand this because Nike have done it so well, is that you have to be on the pulse of what is on people's minds. Mm -hmm. And you have to be, as a brand, you have to be talking about it. And I'm glad that we, as women's sport, are in that space right now. We'll yeah. chat a little bit more about this when we return with Brenda Mulberry, who's our game changer on the Ladies Club. Stay with us.
welcome back. And we are still watching the Ladies Club. Let's get right into it. Our leading lady today is sports marketing guru, Rosalind Golden. Rosalind has worked as an expert in sports and entertainment, intelligence, research, and measurement. She's also worked for the Houten Cricket Board, where she developed a strategic brand plan for the corporate brand, the Highfold Alliance team, as well as Wondrous Stadium. Yeah, she also is well-versed on strategies to deliver customized, connected solutions in order to maximize commercial success. Rosalind was also involved in the compilation of the Host City Marketing Manual for, the, wow. for FIFA for the 2014 World Cup in Brazil. So that is our trailblazer today. But our game changer is Brenda. Brenda, uh, just because we're speaking about other inspirational women, who would you say has inspired you along the way and in your journey? I must say, um, Coach Desiree, one of oh. the things that I like or I admire about her is she, she was a player and she did it against all odds. I mean, she lost a job mm. and, you know, and one day she got an opportunity to be a, a assistant coach. She took that and uh, she was with Coach Vera. She's, she's part of, 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 of that technical team that took the team to Rio Olympics. And then a few years later, here she is, mm. the interim coach. She's a South African, she's a woman, she used to play for Banyana, mm. and here she is as a permanent coach, she's taking the team to the World Cup. I'm so proud of her. Um, she's a South African, and one thing that I like is she was part of the game. True. She knows she knows the difficulties, and she, she, she can be a role model for young players that are coming, and even for the current players, because she's able to relate that mm. then, way back then, we had one kit that a friend used to clean as mm -hmm. well keep in her boot of her car mm -hmm. but nowadays they've got a beautiful kit that change every time That's and true. and it's a lady's cut yeah. i mean i think then they got left over from came. the boys <laughs> yeah. you know yes yeah so that's a, that that's my role model yeah let's talk about outside of football a bit because you are within football space but why are we not seeing as many brands coming in supporting women athletes in South Africa? A lot of, uh, when you look at companies, a lot of them are headed by men. And, and one thing that, I, that I've learned, that I've seen before is when coming to sponsorship, it's, it's also based, yes, there is a company objective, but it also goes to like what, 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 what leadership like, or what's the big thing? And and we've seen that men, men, men sport has always been in the forefront. When companies look at returning investment, they look at that, and they don't know that there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunities in women mm. in sport. Remember, we have the buying powers, mm, you know. Yeah. At the end of the day, we are the ones who are making the decision. So um, I'm pleading, if they are listening right now, mm. please come in, come and join. Two years back, uh, I, was, I was not happy also when Cricket lost their sponsor. I, mm. I mean, you know, it was a great story. We were not alone. I know there are other brands that are coming, mm. but not as, as, as at the level where we are. Yeah. So all I'm just saying is maybe they are not aware. There is an opportunity. But as a marketer, you look at your, uh, uh, your buying power and also target audience. We've got more women in, in South Africa than men, True. you know? Yeah. So you have to invest, you, you cannot shy away or not be part of this. And especially women football, women football is on the rise. We see now with the World Cup, we see more players going abroad, yeah. getting individual contracts, more big things are coming. Not just that cricket, netball, they are doing so great. So I plead with brands, please let's support women in sport. Yeah. And what's quite significant to note is that when it comes to Sassel, it is a full sponsorship. It's not uh, funds that are taken as a CSI project, mm -hmm. which many people, I think for years gone by, that's what they were looking at, women's sport, and that's certainly changing. No, it is. It, it is sponsorship with, with the partners as well. It is clear it's about the sponsorship. There are certain rights that the brand gets. And to show that it's a sponsorship, the brand is also spending more money to leverage it. It's not a CSI at all. That's mm. something that's great to hear. I just want to ask one mm. thing. You know, we are waiting for the Women's mm. League. Yeah. Uh, we're told by the National Federation that any moment we're going to be getting a professional Women's Football League. What's Sassel's involvement going to be there? 
Wow, a Sasso's main involvement will be the Sasso League because remember the Sasso League sure. will be the feeder uh, to, 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 to the uh, professional league. Already the 12 teams that will be starting the league will be coming uh, from the Sasso League, will still be part of the Sasso League and we will be playing a role with Banyana Banyana as well. Sure. Now let's talk about your position as a marketing guru. How else do you influence your your, your, your close circle to go out and support women in sport, not just football? One of the things that I, I normally do, um, especially when I do radio interviews yeah. or either on TV, is, is, is to always sell what sport is all about because at the end of the day some of them they, are, they don't know they don't know the benefits mm. i mean we go to functions with for the association the other partners of association i always want to make sure that i promote the team and also explain to them the benefits that we are getting because you need to be a voice and 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 and, and you also need to be an ambassador and you need to believe in what you do so that's the most important thing that i do and and one of the things that we normally say is even for dialogue even if people if they're interested to get involved come to ask ask us who've been there for 10 years True. and we'll, we'll give you all, all all what it takes to be involved and what you can get out of it as well there's a deep passion there from your side where do you see yourself going in the next five years Wow, I still want to see myself in the space. I must say I love this space so much. And, and, and for me, the main important thing that I love about my job is to see women um, reaching their dreams. One of the, pl uh, some of the players that I have qualified yeah. for the World Cup now, I've known them for the last five years. Sure. A lot of them, the World Cup has always been their dreams. To see them getting contracts abroad, for me, it's something that just ticks me, that say to me, you are in the right industry, yeah. you need to work hard and make sure that more women, the girls that are coming, will get opportunities as well. Unfortunately, I don't own a company, <laughs> but I would love to own a company one day that will invest in women football or women in sport in general. And what keeps you motivated in your day-to-day -day career? Wow, um, I'm a Christian. Um, I'm a mother. Um, I've got two beautiful kids that every time when mommy goes to work, you know, they look at you with those oh. eyes and, and you think about it. And then I've got a supportive and loving husband. And you look at your family and you look at the community in large and say, you know what, wake up, go and do what you can do not just for your family, but for the community. Because remember, uh, in, in our communities, my success is the success of my communities, yes. So just knowing that I'm going to change people's life where I'm working, I work for a great company that takes care of people. And at the end of the day, as I'm sitting at home back to that family, looking at me, I'm happy coming back with a smile, mm -hmm. sitting down. When we watch TV, you see these incredible results that we yeah. see. It just makes my day, you know, it just makes my day. Oh, such a warm spirit. You know, and I think we've come full circle. Yeah. And we've come to the end of our show. We started off by saying that when you uplift a woman, you uplift a not community. only them, yeah. you uplift an entire community. And you have been the perfect example of that. Brenda Mopedi, our game changer this week. Thank you so much for Thank being you so, in so studio much. with us. Thank you so we'll much. We'll see you at the World Cup. Yes, yes, yes. France, here we come. Thank you. <laughs> Let's all go, ladies. Yes. We must go and we buy are our there tickets. in your bag. <laughs> we are in your bag. <laughs> it's time now for us to say au revoir and we'll meet you again next week here on The Ladies Club. Libs, we've got to say our closing line this Absolutely. Time. Remember that greatness is earned but never given. Till next week, adios. <laughs>